Hey guys, Claire here, and in today's video, we're going to get into my thoughts on the final episodes of the Harry and Meghan Netflix docuseries. And before we get into it, remember in last video, I shared the viewership rankings for the docuseries. And in a lot of countries globally, we saw that the docuseries was within the top three, even in countries where English isn't the main language. So its reach was absolutely incredible. Now, Netflix released the figures and confirmed that the series has been such a huge draw on a global scale. Um, I believe the stats said that the series or the documentary was one of the top documentaries for Netflix ever, which is pretty insane. And you'd think with all the hate and all the nasty stuff, the UK media, especially the Daily Mail, has been spewing. It's really irritating them that there are so many people <laughs> across the globe, many of whom don't even read the Daily Mail, that are finally getting to hear the story from Harry and Meghan directly. And I love that for them. You're seeing all of the articles, like since this series has dropped each day, the Daily Mail, The Sun, The Express, they have been writing an obscene amount of articles about Harry and Meghan bashing them, like full on hate fest. A lot of it's saying, oh, the documentary is a flop, it's a failure, it's doing so horribly. But as per usual, the facts say otherwise. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this series has been an emotional roller coaster. I swear, Harry and Meghan had me crying happy tears, had me crying sad tears, had me all choked up, angry, frustrated on their behalf. It was quite a ride. Now, one of the things that I found very interesting was them revealing that they had offered to return the titles. Did Charles and the palace not share with their media friends that that had been the case? I don't think they have because there has been no leaks when it comes to that. So Charles didn't say anything. And in all this time, we keep seeing all these articles saying, oh, well, they should take, they should take back the titles. And why don't they give back the titles? They already offered it. Now, I don't think that Charles didn't take it back because he's some kind hearted father. I mean, we can see that he's clearly not. I think that the reason that he didn't divulge this information to the royal reporters, to the press, is because he doesn't want attention on relinquishing the title for Andrew. So there's that. What do you guys think? But I love that they offered to return it. Good for them. One of the things that struck me while watching all six episodes is how much of a spectacular job the producers and editors did with this docuseries. It did a fantastic job of humanizing Harry and Meghan, especially Meghan. You are making people want to kill me. It's not just a tabloid. It's not just some story. You are making me scared, right? And like that night, to be up and down in the middle of the night looking down my hallway like, are we safe? Are the doors locked? Is security on? Is everything? That's real. Are my babies safe? And you've created it for what? Because you're bored or because it sells your papers or it makes you feel better about your own life? It's real what you're doing. And that's the piece I don't think people fully understand. We have known that for the past few years, the royal reporters and the royal fandom trolls have spent a lot of time and energy trying to strip away Meghan's humanity. Even when it comes to um, her being a mother, you know, they've been so dedicated in this hate fest that you have royal reporters, was it Rebecca English or like there's so many of these 
foul royal reporters, but there's one of them that wrote an article recently, like I think was like last week, um, talking about a moon bump. So you can't convince me that some of these full on troll accounts on social media does not belong to some of these people. Like I, I honestly think that some of these reporters who in my mind are just nothing but career gossips who like to kiss the butts of the royal family. But you can't convince me that some of these people do not have troll accounts, especially on Twitter. You can't. And I suspect a couple of aides from the palace as well. But that's just me. What do you guys think? But a lot of these trolls, which also included Megan's wicked stepsister or half sister trying to put out this narrative that Megan is not a mom she has a moon bump Archie and Lily aren't real they're a doll uh, one of the other conspiracy theories is that uh, they they're borrowed from a girl like it's just it's insane and I love the way that they've spent so much attention showing their love story, humanizing them, and including these wonderful snippets showing Megan as a woman, as a wife, and as a mother. Very heartwarming and well done. I feel like the team responsible for producing this has done a spectacular job this docu-series was the best of the best and it really hit the key points addressing things that needed to be addressed in such a clear and concise way while also covering their love story covering them as mom and dad I loved seeing Harry as a father we really don't get to see that much over the years or we haven't gotten to see that much over the years so it's so nice to see him with the kids reading to the kids playing with them just enjoying being a father and if you've followed harry for a while then you know that that's something that he's always looked forward to so it's so refreshing to see that Now, I feel like doing this docuseries on a platform like Netflix was such a good move for Harry and Meghan. For the sake of posterity, I feel like it's very important for them to tell their story on a platform that is not going to be manipulated by the royal family and the UK tabloids. And that is Netflix. Netflix is not intimidated by the tabloids. They're not intimidated by the royal family. So them doing this docuseries sort of reminds me of Princess Diana doing her interview and backing up the claims that she's made in the interview in the book. And even with that interview and that book out there, the royal family, William included, have been trying their best to rewrite history, to change the narrative, going so far as to calling her paranoid. But we know better because we heard her story in her own words. And this does the same thing. The royal family tends to play long game. And I feel like Harry and Meghan are doing the same. The projects that they work on, the partnerships, that they foster are with people who have been doing this, who are top tier, Netflix, Spotify, their connection with World Kitchen, with all of these different organizations that they're doing partnerships with. It sets them up to create their own legacy on their own terms in a way that the royal family and the British press, I mean, they can write their stories and say what they wanna say, but Harry and Meghan are truly taking control of their own lives and their own narrative. Long game. And I feel like this frustrates the firm and it frustrates the tabloids because they really thought that they can hound and abuse them so much that maybe 
they didn't care if Megan, you know, took her own life. I think they were hoping that it got so bad that she would run back and Harry would get divorced and he'd stay there forever the wingman for William and Kate. And much to their chagrin, after years of this constant campaign of smear and hatred, it really hasn't wielded the results that they thought it would. There have been so many people on social media saying, you know, I don't care one way or another, but you know, I'm rooting for them. They seem like genuinely nice people. There are people who are saying that, you know, some of the older family members who really didn't care for them are like, you know what? I changed my mind. They seem nice. Long game. There are those who are going to hate and that's just what they're going to do. Can't focus on that. They focus on telling their story in their own words and being true to who they are. And the people who get it, get it. And the people who don't, don't. Imagine the narratives the firm would have created for Diana had we not heard her story in her own words. I mean, even in real time, we're seeing them trying to push these different narratives. And one of them that was successfully pushed and spread and amplified was the privacy thing. So I love that that got a little bit of attention. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but a lot of the abuse tactics that were talked about in the Netflix series, I know a lot of us Harry and Meghan stands like, we know because we pay attention. But I love that it was included in the docu-series, like an amalgamation of the tactics used by the British press to try to destroy Meghan. And you can draw a straight line from those tactics right all the way back to Princess Diana. And in a lot of ways, it's a lot of the same people. Robert Jobson, was it Paul Burrell, Penny Jerner. Same family, same institution, same media, same people, same tactics. So I love that that is being exposed. I mean, they really did Prince Harry dirty. Had him out on display walking behind his mother's casket. All for PR, with no regard for his feelings, a 12-year-old boy. And then when that's done, they kind of just left him by the wayside, making sure that William is secure and taken care of because he is to be the king. They just left him on the wayside and he talked about that. And also that's one of the things I saw uh, um, a host from one of those shows on a Fox network talking about that. So again, the reach, the humanizing of Harry and Meghan in this docuseries did a phenomenal job. It's really connecting with a lot of people who really haven't been paying attention. And that's how you make a connection emotionally. So they use him for PR for his mother's death neglect him and then when he's old enough use him as a scapegoat in order to distract from William and some people were talking on Twitter the other day about um, Harry you know really talking about the Halloween Nazi uniform and how horrible he felt and him taking accountability for that and it's true I mean you guys let me know but does anyone know what Prince William was wearing to that party? I don't know. I've never heard or seen an image of that. Now, it was reported that William was right there with Harry when buying that costume, encouraged it even. How is it that we don't know what he wore? Or maybe some of you guys know that I don't? And if that's the case, let me know. But that's interesting. The scapegoat. And then when he finds a woman that he's in love with, they want to destroy that relationship. And when he said no, they want to destroy him for in their minds, choosing her over them. I mean, with family like that, you don't need enemies. 
When I tell you, I mean, he, both Harry and Meghan's family on their father's side, straight garbage. Titles and tiaras be damned. Garbage. It doesn't make them better. It really, really doesn't. And while we were looking at that docuseries, did you guys realize how very humble, I'm going to use the word humble to describe the dwellings that Harry and Meghan stayed in? Now, I've been a Meghan fan for a while, and I know her homes in California and her home in Canada was far more swanky and poppin' than that home in the UK. So when the people, the trolls and the royal road are like, oh my God, she's a gold digger. A gold digger? Do you see where they were living? Megan gave up <laughs> her freedom and her fabulous homes to move into that place, be surrounded by a bunch of vipers who are trying to tear her apart. You think, what gold? Where? Seriously. Oh, but one of the key things that I really enjoyed was seeing the palace get exposed for lying. Now, I feel like Harry really didn't go in on anyone else but William. He really didn't touch on Charles or the way they were freaking out about Camilla. And I don't know, maybe Camilla said or did something, but Harry didn't doesn't seem to care about Camilla. But he really wanted us to know about William, about what William and his henchman, North, has been up to. And I am here for the exposure. Now, like we discussed in the last video, the palace lied. Buckingham and Kensington Palace both said that they weren't contacted by Netflix. Netflix said, uh-uh, why are you lying? Call them out on it. And now there was a recent article um, in BuzzFeed by Ellie Hall. And I know some people give Ellie the major side eye. Trust me, I do too as well. But her sources came from Netflix and I believe the other production company. And I think even Archwell responded as well saying that yes not only did they contact buckingham palace and kensington palace but they named the names um, of the people who were contacted for each palace the new guy or the replacement for jason knopf i can't remember his name currently and then the new guy for william and kate requested to see or get some copies of the docuseries and that was denied by Netflix and then he didn't respond to them again right and the guy for Buckingham Palace is the fella that Charles and Camilla hired from the Daily Mail the Daily Mail transplant that they hired this year he was also contacted but then remember when the first three episodes came out, they lied and said that they weren't contacted at all. And now Netflix and the production company and Archwell are saying, yeah, that's a lie. We did contact you. And these are the specific people representing the specific palaces exposed. The problem is now Harry and Meghan's docuseries has exposed that a lot of these stories are planted are leaked from the palace and they hide behind unnamed palace sources and i've seen a lot of conversation throughout the week of people talking about that enough with the unnamed palace sources name the names name the names stop hiding behind it because when you hide behind these unnamed palace sources we don't know is it from the palace did you make it up Anyone can say anything and say it's from an unnamed source. So I love that that has also been exposed and it's being a topic of conversation for many. Also, another lie, the joint statement 
that William's team sent out, I believe in 2020, saying that William wasn't bullying Harry, remember? They said that that statement was from Harry and William. Harry revealed that was a lie. Willy Wonka did that on his own. Exposed. And did you guys see how Megan <laughs> was pissed after Jason Knopf pulled his little stunt? When we were just about to go to the Court of Appeal, a senior member of the Duke of Cambridge's team came forward to give this witness statement, which wasn't required. And sadly, there's just no way he could have done that without um, the authority of his bosses. But so how do we deal with that? Like, how on earth, like... What? Like, I... That, I know. Like, like, I'm... Like, it's your brother. I'm not gonna say anything about your brother, but it's so obvious. It's like, What's even, all of... This is more obvious about we're all trying to cover that. Again, Jason, the former aide of Meghan and Harry, as opposed to... That's what I keep saying. I'm like, why are we talking about him as her former aide and not as the person who works for your brother? That's why I'm now living in a different country. And worked with the tabloid in an attempt to have her lose her case, but it didn't work. She won it anyway. And then another lie was revealed because Knopf said, oh no, I was asked to give the information by both parties involved. And Megan's lawyer said, uh, yeah, you're lying. We didn't. We didn't ask you to provide information for that case. And they went further showing that they weren't requested to provide information to the tabloid. They did that on their own accord. Another lie exposed and I've seen Jason Knopf has been trending for days days and I've even seen a lot of articles calling him out saying who is this Jason Knopf and what I've really been enjoying seeing is that the articles written by the US media unlike the UK media rightfully links Knopf to William and Kate because remember, during the trial, the UK media just kept saying, well, this is Harry and Meghan's ex-communication aide or secretary or whatever the title was, as opposed to William and Kate's fella. So that's being revealed. And I like that Harry's pulled the curtain and exposed William's hand in this. And he did it in an artful but clear way. Not nastily, not angrily, but clear where you can see all roads lead to Kensington Palace. And who's at the top of Kensington Palace? William and Kate. And as we've seen since the first episode's drop, a lot of these royal reporters have been snitching. A lot of them are Harry and Meghan haters as well. Um, yes, the Express this morning is reporting as other papers are, the, the latest trailer from the new section of uh, Harry and Meghan's uh, Netflix documentaries where he's uh, said that the, they, whoever they is, what's the palace of the media, uh, wouldn't tell the truth to protect us, but they would do to protect William. There is probably some truth in that, in the sense that the palace in particular was very keen to make sure that the heir to the throne yeah. uh, was protected and Harry could be sacrificed if necessary. And actually when I was working, I, I shouldn't give the name of the paper, but I was doing a piece for the, one of the nationals, writing a piece, and I was told, because uh, I'm quite critical of the monarchy in many ways, I was told I could, I could say what I wanted about Harry and Meghan, but I had to lay off William and Kate. That was the instruction from the editor. So that I think there was an element of truth in what he says. But they've openly admitted they were told, lay off William and Kate, go ham on Harry and Meghan. They've openly admitted that a lot of the leaks and lies come from Kensington Palace. I really enjoyed seeing Tyler Perry. Now remember, like a day before the trailer for the second volume was released the daily mail 
wrote an article saying, you know, Tyler Perry and the Hollywood elites have turned their backs on Meghan and Harry, you know, dramatic nonsense as usual. And then the next day you see Tyler Perry in the trailer <laughs> proving that they're liars. And I love how supportive Tyler is. I mean, he's become one of their biggest cheerleaders. And my God, what an incredible person to have in your corner. He is just such a godsend, a wonderful person. And his generosity and support and warm heart has helped so many people over the years. Like he is truly one of those people where it's like God has blessed him and he is using all those blessings that he has gotten to bless others. What an incredible man. And now he is Godfather to Lily. And did you guys catch that shade? He was like, do we have to go over there by these people? Because I don't want to do that. And I loved how he pointed out the abusive tactics used by Harry's family. He was spot on in that observation. Throughout these six episodes, we've seen so many wonderful friends and family of Harry and Meghan. You know, a lot of the, the, the trolls and the royal reporters are trying to pretend that we don't see that there are people from both sides that love and support Harry and Meghan. They focus on the worst. They like to focus on Scamantha and the, the father and the half-brother on Meghan's side. And on Harry's side, they like to focus on William and Charles. But Harry still has his connection to his friends, his connection to his cousin. Eugenie just looked so happy in those tidbits when she's around Harry and Meghan. They have a wonderful set of friends. And I love that for them. It makes me happy. I don't think I have rooted this hard for two strangers I have never met and will likely never meet the way I root for Harry and Meghan. I don't think they're perfect. I don't agree with everything that they say or do. But my God, the abuse directed at these people, it makes my blood boil. And I've noticed that there are a lot of celebrities who have come out in defense of them. Um, there's a country and western star. Well, we know uh, Dolly Parton's sister. She loves her some Harry and Meghan. A lot of young stars. Even Julia Fox. Yeah, Julia. <laughs> you know, Anka Jams. She came out to support them. A lot of the younger celebrities are saying, look, we love us some Harry and Meghan. Enough with the abuse. You don't like him, fine, but you don't know these people. And a lot of the, the thoughts and views that you have on them, the information is sourced from tabloids. Tabloids that are notorious for lies. So this is their opportunity to tell their story in their own words, listen, and then make up your mind. And even if you choose not to like them still, you don't need to go on this rampage or crusade to try to tear them apart. That's horrible. William is Charles' son. And Harry is very much Diana's son. Because think about it, and you realize that he is not taking anything away from William. But Harry processed his mother's death very differently than William did. William had another track. William was, is, was and is preparing to be king. Harry admits he had a line, a throwaway line, that I want you guys to listen closely when he says it. And Addie, I don't know if you heard this. He said, talking about mourning his mother, he goes, I was left alone to process my mother's death, which tells me the infrastructure of the palace were not there. You know, they were rightfully so constant. It's not a fault of William. 
But that's why if you have watched your mother go through what we all watch Diana go through, and if you're Harry and your mother got killed because of that, wouldn't you do everything in your power to prevent that happening to your wife and child? And that's exactly what Harry did. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I walked away a bigger fan because I have a much better appreciation for what they really went through. This profound hatred and annoyance at Meghan Markle specifically, mostly coming from women, I have to say. It's unfathomable to me because people are saying like, oh, a woman should never take a man away from his family. That's all that this is. Um, have you seen this family? When we go back to the abdication of King Edward, who left the family because they would not allow him to marry the woman he loved because she had been divorced, he left the family. When they didn't allow Princess Margaret to marry Peter Townsend, she did not leave the family, but I kind of wish she had. I mean, apart from Diana, Princess Margaret's story is one of the saddest. And if we talk about Princess Di, she didn't leave her children, but she left the family. Now, I don't know these people, and neither do you.